Hi, everyone, and welcome to this special live Q&A on Impact's Facebook channel. I'm Tom Hannafin. We'll be joined in a moment by the president of Impact Wrestling, soon to be TNA Wrestling, Scott Demore, in just a moment. Obviously, this has been a huge week for all of us here in Impact Wrestling this past weekend. The 19th annual Bound for Glory event was sold out in Chicago. It was absolutely astonishing the way that we went off the air. A surprise to me and plenty of people in attendance, of course, is that TNA is returning as of Saturday, January 13th, 2024 for the Hard to Kill pay-per-view, which will be live at the Palms in Las Vegas, Nevada. There are so many pieces of news to get to, so before I welcome in Scott Demore, I do want to get to that news. First, the official first signing of the new era of TNA Wrestling was announced this morning by company president Scott Demore. PCO, who won the four-person Monsters Ball match this past Saturday at the 2023 Bound for Glory event, has re-signed with TNA Impact Wrestling, and the terms were not disclosed. We are very fortunate to have Perfect Creation 1 as a part of the future of TNA Wrestling. Also, the live Impact Wrestling show that goes down this Thursday, October 26th, at the O2 Academy in Glasgow, Scotland, will be a special taping for the company's flagship weekly TV show, Impact. That will air on Thursday, November 9th, starting at 8 p.m. Eastern on Access TV here in the United States. The Glasgow stop on the UK Invasion Tour features some huge matches that have been announced. The Motor City Machine Guns, the reigning Impact World Champion Alex Shelley, the reigning X Division Champion Chris Sabin will battle the dream team of Josh Alexander and Eric Young. Plus, Scotland's own and a TNA legend, Grado, will face the generational talent, Trey Miguel. Also, the war machine, Rhino, will collide with the two-time Impact World Champion, Eddie Edwards. And also, the 2023 Bound for Glory Call Your Shot Gauntlet winner, Jordan Grace, who's already called her shot for the Knockouts World title at Hard to Kill, will go one-on-one -on -one with the quintessential diva, Giselle Shaw, and much, much more. Just a reminder to all of you tuning in right now that tickets for Hard to Kill 2024 and the following night's Snake Eyes extravaganza, that's January 13th and 14th respectively, both will be held at the Palms in Las Vegas. Those tickets will go on sale Friday, November 4th. That is a week, Friday, November 3rd, if I'm not mistaken, but head to impactwrestling.com for more information. So without further ado, Let's welcome the president of Impact Wrestling, and I should say TNA Wrestling, Scott Demore. Hey, Tom. Scott, long time no see. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we had a lot of fun in Chicago. I know you yeah. were fired up. You put a couple bucks in the swear jar after we went off the air. It was so exciting. I, I have goosebumps thinking about it, how we went off the air for Bound for Glory, the announcement of the return of TNA Wrestling. Can you just share some of the emotions that you were feeling in that moment and, of course, in the lead up to this historic announcement? Yeah, I mean, it's um, it was a special night, Tom. I think, uh, you know, I know we've talked about it. You felt it. A lot. A lot of people did. And uh, th there was a lot of uh, angst <laughs> heading into it. Right. I mean, I think we all knew and, and in our hearts knew we were heading in the right direction but whenever you have that time when you're waiting and especially you know that video that tremendously uh and wonderful video that was put together by the national team and and our our uh, production uh, team that's second to none um you know watching that again and at this point having seen it over and over but but getting to see people watch it for the first time and and getting to, to see that reaction that no, it can't. It, 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 is it? It's it's almost like, you know, it's been teased a few times, and and now there to have it. I, I think it's uh, I think it's a landmark night in our company's history, and uh, it's a night that I will I will personally uh, never forget, and I mean, and I'll cherish. And I think that uh, when you look back at things in five, ten, twenty years, it's going to be a pivotal night in the company's history. It, it was amazing and it just feels right scott uh on top of that some of the breaking news that i just mentioned would love to get your comments on the upcoming impact uk invasion tour our first time back in the united kingdom for major events in eight years and also the re-signing of the french canadian frankenstein pco yeah you know i mean look wrestling like uh like all sports and that has an ebb and a flow to it and 
Uh, I know some reports got out there about PCO. I mean, the fact was we tried to handle it the way we handle anything. You know, something cir cir circulated on the internet, uh, went to PCO, had a frank and honest conversation with them. And, uh, you know, Perfect Creation One said, you know, I don't, I don't want to go anywhere, but this is where I want to be. So we sat there. I think it took us all of five minutes to, to walk out of there, you know, that very night with a handshake and kind of say, hey, this is what we're working towards. And, and then getting it done and getting it done at Bound for Glory weekend, which is such an important and uh, pivotal, you know, time for our company. I think it's, uh, it's great because PCO, um, when I think of TNA wrestling, I think of AJ Styles. I think of Samoa Joe. But I think partially because they were so different than what the norm was there. And when you start thinking about differentiating yourself from the norm, it doesn't get much different than PCO. And, uh, you know, hey, here we are. PCO is the first of many wrestlers that uh, will be, I'm sure, signing TNA contracts in the years to come. But I think what a, what a story and what a testament after the career that PCO has had and the reinvention of himself and what he's done here uh, on top of that these last couple of years with uh, Impact, then I think, you know, PCO is a perfect and shining example of uh, a never quit attitude, a hard to kill. We're coming for you attitude and we're excited to have PCO with us for a long time. Absolutely. And uh, the upcoming Impact UK Invasion Tour, four huge nights of action, Glasgow, Scotland, Newcastle, uh, already a sold out date in Coventry, two total nights in Coventry. That's between October 26th and the 29th. There's still select tickets available via impactwrestling.com. Uh, when this opportunity came up, how important was it to you for this company to get back to the UK? Well, I mean, I, I think when you look at things historically in this company, the UK is such a massive part of this company's his and history and success story. So it's been far too long since we've been there. And, you know, we had dipped our toe in the water in 19. Then we went, you know, we were lining things up and looking to do things in 20. And then what happened to the world happened to the world. And uh, it took us a while to get there. But to be back there, going back to such a, a key market, such a great wrestling market, um, I'm super excited for it. And I think on the heels of this announcement going in there, um, you know, TNA wrestling has a great history in, uh, in the UK and bringing impact wrestling there as part of our, you know, I've been kind of joking. It's almost like our, our, um, our victory lap for everything we've done under the last many years under the impact banner, as we get ready to, to flip that switch for 2024 and hard to kill. And I, I think it's going to be a four day celebration. And I think it's great that, uh, you know, the fans there in Glasgow, which is, you know, a great wrestling town, Grado's town, are going to uh, are going to get a chance to be seen around the world because they're a rowdy, great crowd. So that'll be featured on uh, Impact Wrestling's flagship broadcast. And then Newcastle with uh, with Will Ospreay is going to be uh, is going to be a very special uh, Impact Plus event, you know, there that will air November 4th. And then we'll have two just. You know, in, in, in wrestling, sometimes I think it gets lost sometimes what we used to call house shows or live events where the cameras aren't necessarily rolling. But, uh, you know, the talents out there and just having fun and doing what they do best and put on bangers. So we've got some announcements that are about to come out with the cards for uh, Coventry. And I think uh, I think people are going to see it's the, it's the same great action that you're seeing at the broadcast events in an intimate setting and uh, looking forward to four amazing nights over there. Uh, I just want to clarify some confusion from earlier. Tickets in regards to Hard to Kill 2024 will go out Friday, November 3rd. Apologies for the confusion there. That's via impactwrestling.com. That's the same day the turning point will air on Impact Plus Friday, November 3rd. Very important for all of our viewers. Uh, this is a big opportunity because we have media from around the world that have e emailed in questions for Scott to answer. Uh, we'd love to get to all of them. It's just unfortunately not possible, but we will get to a handful of these or else it might take, uh, you know, the rest of the remaining day. So this is Adrian Hernandez first from uh, the bet 98.5 FM in Las Vegas, which is appropriate. We're headed there for hard to kill in 2024. Scott, Adrian's first question with the change to TNA in 2024, what's the biggest goal for the company next year? I, I, I think one of the things you have to look at with uh, with the changes here and and returning to the iconic, iconic TNA brand is, uh, you know, Tom, I feel like over the last many years, um, there's been a lot of time spent apologizing for past regimes and past mistakes. And I think not enough time celebrating 
what we do here amazingly, which is week in and week out, put one of the very best wrestling shows on anywhere in the world. Um, so I think 2024 is really that statement. We're back. We're back. We, uh, you know, TNA wrestling is here. Um, you know, we, we, you look at all those things, like there's no more apologizing. I don't want to hear about what happened in 2012 or 14 or 16 or whatever the, that's the past, you know, under impact, what we did, we went out there and we established stability. We established stability and consistency. Um, and we've started to now be consistently good and consistently great. And I think 2024 is what we do is we go out there and we say, we're impact wrestling. We're going to go out there. We're going to be a creative force in the business. We're going to be an agent of change. And we're going to go out there and put out kick-ass events. And, you know, if, uh, if, if you don't like it, cool. If we're going to let your cup of tea, cool. We know what we do is good and we're going to go out there and do what we do. And that's, and that's just put out uh, amazing, fantastic shows with an unbelievable roster and uh, a support team. So uh, super excited for us. I think the time, the landscape and wrestling is perfect for it. And uh, we're going to go out there and, and do what we do, be an agent for change. A follow-up question from Adrian Hernandez. How much of an interest is there to sign Will Ospreay, especially after his matches this past weekend? Yeah. Um, I mean, look, Will Ospreay is arguably the, the greatest wrestler in the world right now. And I don't think anybody, I don't really know if it's even disputable, that uh, 2023 Will Ospreay is having one of the greatest years of any wrestler in history. Um, so I think any company that said they didn't want Will Ospreay at the center of their universe would, would be lying. So, um, you know, Will's kind of been pretty honest and upfront about what's happening and the fact that he's, uh, he's going to be a free agent soon. And the second that his contract expires, he becomes the hottest free agent in professional wrestling. Uh, would we love to have Will Ospreay? Absolutely. You know, Will Ospreay is a great talent. You saw, you know, two examples of that this weekend. You saw him and Mike Bailey put on a match of the year candidate. And I mean, only the people there have saw it live so far, but you'll see it in an upcoming week of uh, impact uh, weekly television. Uh, Will Ospreay and, and, and Josh Alexander went out there and put on an unbelievable uh, match. So, and then Ospreay's comments, you know, both to Josh Alexander and, and about uh, impact wrestling. And I think it, I just think it's cool. You look at the greatest wrestler in the world, you look at the hottest, soon to be hottest free agent in professional wrestling. And he's sitting there and saying, look, I wanted to come here to Impact Wrestling. But when I, when I was young, I dreamed of being in a TNA ring. So, you know, that that opportunity is open to Will Ospreay. And uh, I can tell you that, uh, you know, I've, I've had conversations with Anthem Sports and everything else and, and let them know. And they're well aware of who Ospreay is and what Will Ospreay is. And, uh, you know, don't know where where Ospreay is going to end up, but he's there's certainly a seat at the table here and a meaningful one where he could be at the center of a lot of that advancement and change that we talk about. Um, but in the meantime, I guess I've got to get down to the fact that, you know, he ended up his uh, stay here this past weekend, weekend by saying he wants to wrestle in a TNA ring. So uh, we better get that done and get it done uh, quick. No argument here. Uh, moving on to another question here. This is from Tim Battle, iHeartRadio's nationally syndicated wrestling podcast, specifically the Battleground podcast. His question, uh, with the reversion to the original TNA name, can you provide insight into how this decision was made? Did it involve repurchasing the name? And can we expect all new championship belts or will we be using the classic TNA belts? Yeah, and I mean, look, I think I covered a little bit of it earlier by by saying that, uh, you know, we, we when I got here and, and took over the helm in, in two, going into 2018, um, the company had gone through so much. It had been TNA wrestling, then Impact Wrestling, then I, I think it might have briefly been TNA, then it was, then it was GFW, then it was, it was uh, Impact, and Coming in, the last thing it needed was another name change. What it needed was to figure itself out. What it needed was, like I said, it needed stability. It needed consistency. It needed respectability. And we spent a lot of time under the, the impact banner doing that. Um, and I think we've proven ourselves. But the fact is, when this company was formed, when this idea you know, was first hatched, three men on a boat, you know, with Jeff and Jerry Jarrett and Bob Ryder, it was total nonstop action wrestling. That's what they were, that's what they were looking for. And, uh, you know, I think that, that while we found that stability, 
um, you know, under the impact banner and very proud of that. I think what we now have is we're ready to go there and have our growth and our true success, our true second golden era under our true name, you know, TNA wrestling. And I, I think that for those that, you know, and I've had a few people say, but boy, I really like impact. Well, we're back where we're supposed to be. The name of the company is TNA wrestling, but every Thursday night, you're tuning in to impact, you know, TNA wrestling impact. And I think both of those brands have value, but I think TNA at our core is who we are. And I think it gives us back that swagger that maybe we've lacked. When I talk about, you know, too much apologizing, that's done. Are we going to make mistakes? Absolutely. But when we do, we'll get up, we'll dust our stuff off and our, ourselves off and we'll just get back at it. You know, we are going back in the direction. We are going to go back to our roots. We are going to look to honor the history at all times of men like AJ Styles and Samoa Joe and Kurt Angle. And even like those still here. I mean, we're lucky enough to have Eric Young and the Motor City Machine Guns, Frankie Kazarian, some of the originals. But we are going to go out there and we are going to press. Remember, when the whole business zigged, we zagged. When small wrestlers weren't allowed to be in the main event, even WCW for all their work with cruiserweights, you know, they didn't main event. They main evented here. AJ Styles is world champion here. You know, we changed an industry. When tag team wrestling was almost obsolete, we went out there with Team Canada and America's Most Wanted and Three Live Crew and, you know, so many other great teams, Triple X and everything, you know, and, and did tag team wrestling right. And when women were still wrestling in mud and jello and fighting over who might get a chance to sleep with somebody twice, a man twice their age, we went out there and gave women a platform to go out there and be athletes and be re be respected and showcased as such equally. So we will continue to do those things. And I think we're going to be go out there. And I think people for a long time have asked what impact wrestling is. And I think now you're going to see a clearer, cleaner vision of that. And I think it's an amazing time in wrestling, not here throwing shade at anybody else. I think there's a lot of great things out there, but we're very confident in, in putting our foot in the ground, planting our stake and saying, we're really good at what we're doing. We're coming. Uh, to the follow-up question that Tim had, uh, this changeover, did it involve repurchasing the name of TNA and also will there be new title belts or will we see a return to classic TNA belts? Yeah, I mean, it didn't involve a repurchase at all. Uh, you know, uh, TNA Wrestling has always been a part of the IP here. It's always been owned by uh, by this company. And that's why you were able to see back uh, a few years ago, we did a special on uh, on Access TV, a one-night TNA special there. You know, we had planned a, a one-night reunion show uh, a few years ago. There's No Place Like Home. Well, now we get to celebrate No Place Like Home every single week. Um, you know, and we had we had brought back for a short while the, the TNA World Heavyweight title. So, um, no, there was no repurchase involved. It was really about finding the right time. And we all felt in our hearts this was the right time. Um, championship belts, we've got all new championship belts. And I know that people have talked about, you know, a return to this design, a return to that design. And there's some amazing designs. And the belts will continue to evolve and, and change with time. But we felt it was important that, you know, we're TNA wrestling, but we're still moving forward. We have uh, all new championship belts and those will be, uh, those will be revealed, you know, as we lead up here to uh, hard to kill. Um, you know, one of the things to address is all of the current impact wrestling champions, champions, that lineage will continue. So we're not crowning new champions. You know, if the, if the, if the switch flipped today, Trinity would be the TNA knockouts world champion. Alex Shelley would be the, DNA world champion and so on from there. So, um, you know, I think, uh, I think fans will be excited to see the belts. We wanted to, to give them an update. We wanted to make them something new and we wanted them to be something that we pushed forward into a new era with. Beautiful. Next set of questions comes from uh, Mike Johnson from PW Insider. What do you say to people who assume this means a return to the Dixie Carter slash Jeff Jarrett slash Vince Russo era? <laughs> yeah um look i mean i, I guess I'm, I'm just trying to say this as nicely as i can i said i said it earlier this isn't about looking back this is about looking forward and and certainly you know tna uh you know has had its uh impact wrestling really has had it, its, its ups and downs over the years but we're talking about looking we're, we're looking at taking you know the things that worked bringing them back we're looking, we're looking at doing a better job of managing how, uh, how things are handled. And like I said, are we going to make mistakes? Absolutely. But we're going to, we're going to do more great than we do, than, than we do missteps. 
And uh, this isn't this isn't about any one person. It's not about Jeff Jarrett. It's not about Vince Russo. It's not about Scott Demore. This is about a locker room uh, and a company that feels something special. And this is about a fan base that I think is starting to feel something special. When you go to when you go to these arenas and uh, and these venues and you see the crowd there, there's a connection between our audience and between our company. And we're going to grow that in 2024 and get it back where it needs to be. So I think, you know, with all due respect, I, I th- this this isn't about going backwards and it's not about any one person. This is about TNA wrestling. This is about going out there and having a fast paced athletic style. Um, and, you know, it's a moving forward type of look. So with all due respect to the past, this has nothing to do. And anybody who wants to bring up the past, cool, um, dwell in the past if that's if that's where your mind's going. But we're looking at the future. Another question here from Mike Johnson. What was the reaction of the locker room when they learned about shooting the vignette to reveal the return of TNA? And how happy are you that it never leaked from them? Yeah, I mean, I guess firstly, I got to inform each and every person who was part of that that reveal video uh, myself. And uh, the reaction was overwhelmingly amazing. Um, and, and if there was ever any doubts about it, seeing their faces and hearing their voices as they hear, um, you know, to, to hear, you know, athletes like, like Jordan Grace to like almost be like, like, uh, just giddy at the fact and just like overwhelmed with the fact that, that she's going to be a TNA knockout, um, you know, to, to see Josh Alexander and, and, and that be able to say like, this is what I dreamed about when I was struggling in life and I was looking for something and I didn't have a lot of hope it was Wednesday nights and it was TNA wrestling that gave me that hope and that direction in my life to see the look in his face, to see, you know, the machine guns eyes light up and Frankie, you know, give me that big F. Yeah. You know, I mean, to see all that, I thought it was fantastic. And uh, Tom, I know you saw it. Somebody, uh, somebody, somebody filmed the locker room uh, when that announcement was made and you were out in front of the crowd. I was behind the curtain and heading to the ring uh, and some of the comment I saw it. It's amazing. I, I, you, I've never seen, and people that someone made this comment, it's true. A locker room explode like that and just go crazy. I mean, they, they, they felt it and you can see the, as it's going on, what? No. And then when you hear that whisper, they're almost like, no. And then as it comes to, to pass, it was, I mean, it was an ex- explosion of emotion and excitement. And I think it was matched equally in that, in that arena. You know, Cicero Stadium came came unglued, and it was music to the ears to hear those those TNA chants um, echo around that building. You know, Tom, you're out there and you hear it. The uh, those those chants never went away, and it didn't matter if it was our shows around the country or whether it was Bobby Roode and AJ Styles standing in the ring at Royal Rumble or whether it was Jeff Jarrett and Sting standing in the middle of the ring for an AEW pay per view. There's people that grew up with TNA wrestling and have fond memories of TNA wrestling. Are there the haters? Sure. And what's the saying? Haters hate, but there's people that love, love this company and love this brand. And I feel like Tom, we, we've spent six years. It's almost like, you know, our crowds have been almost respectful by trying not to chant TNA. And it's like the other night, it's like, we kindly went and said like, go ahead. Like, you know, you've wanted it. Here it is. And they fully embraced it. And to address the idea, like you said, about the leaking, like to put this in perspective, um, th- this, this was first formulated early in 2023, you know, and the circle kept expanding as the year went on about who was inside that circle and in the know on it. And I mean, look, I mean, I remember having this conversation, you know, back early in the year and saying, it, it's a miracle if we, if we see spring without this getting out. Um, And the fact that it was kept under wraps until that very night, like to me is truly special. It's a testament to the type of individuals that we have in this company, both on camera and behind the scenes. Um, It meant a lot to everybody to create that special moment. And I mean, look, uh, we all like to know what's going on. And, you know, I mean, we, we all like to know the behind the scenes stuff and all that. And that's part of the industry. And that's part of fandom. You know, I'm a Chicago Bears man, I want to know what's going on in the locker room in the front office, right? But that doesn't change the fact that some of the coolest moments come when you just don't have a clue. And we wanted to give our fans and our supporters a special moment where this comes out of nowhere 
and they get to experience that and they get to have that feeling and share that feeling with the uh, friends and family uh, and other people, um, you know, but wow, like we were part of something special. And I think anybody that was in that building this past Saturday in Chicago, they were part of something special and I think they felt it. And to me, it reminds me of, I mean, to this day, as I sit here, you know, just shy of 50 years old, I remember the exact feeling of walking into the Pontiac Silverdome for WrestleMania three. You know, I remember Steamboat Savage. I remember Hulk picking up Andre, you know, I remember all those things and I'll carry those, you know, for as long as I walk God's green earth. And I think that on Saturday night, we gave people one of those moments. And in 2024, we get back to giving them moments like that, um, you know, on a regular basis. And uh, we look to create moments, bonds, and just, um, you know, put out a great product night in, night out and grow. That's what people have been saying for the longest time. I love the show. You know, it's time to, to get out and grow. And I think 2024 is a growth year for TNA wrestling. I love it. it. Gives me goosebumps just thinking about it, honestly. A um, couple more questions here. This one comes from uh, Bob Caper at Slam Wrestling. Any throwback ideas being considered, such as the six sided ring, the return of the TNA King of the Mountain Championship, et cetera? What do you think? Well, one tidbit for you, Tom, uh, Bob Kapoor there, who just asked that question, was actually uh, Bobo on uh, on Impact Television a few years ago, if you look back at things. So anybody who wants to go look it up on Impact Plus, find uh, Bobo. He uh, he made a few appearances with us back in the uh, in the day, and like, uh, that was probably 18, 19. Um, tidbit for you there, Tom. Uh, Professor Mike today would have known that and led with that. Um, no, um, look, the, the six sided ring question comes up all the time and I get it. I was in the room when the six sided ring was, was, was brought in to be a reality. Um, you know, and I know it has its supporters, but the fact is at the end of the day, it almost to a person, the athletes that have performed in the six sided ring, um, don't prefer it. They say it, it, it it's harder on their body, uh, creates more energy injury and more so than injury. Um, it, it's just, it, it, it creates more wear and tear on their body. It's just doing it night after night is harder on the body. And I'm happy to have conversations and we're happy to have conversations about how to make the product look the best. But one of the things that unwaveringly, uh, we're not willing to negotiate on or to, uh, or to compromise is the athlete's health and safety. So we're going to be a four-sided ring. I know that disappoints a lot of people, but my, my, my respectful and honest question to them is, do you really love the six-sided ring more than you love uh, ensuring the health and safety of the men and women that get in that ring and put their health on the line? No matter what they do, do you want to make it an even more dangerous situation for them? So um, respectfully, you know, I mean... It's wrestling, never say never. And I mean, certainly there can be changes in the future. And, you know, I haven't exactly got out my uh, my drafting tools and looked at designing a, a, better, a better, safer ring. But uh, it, it's a simple one for us. Athlete safety, number one. Um, so we have four sides. Um, take a look at, take that off the table and anything else is possible. We know that there's a lot of nostalgia. You know, I know some people have tunnel vision. <laughs> Television. Um, you know, so we'll we'll look at things like that. And you look at it, you've seen a lot of the the pay-per-view titles from the past return to our schedule here on uh you know for impact wrestling. Like whatever what are our next two premium events? We've got to, we've got turning point and uh final resolution, right? So you you've seen that mixed in. You you know, we do Ultimate X on a regular basis. That's one of the, the signature matches, as we say, of our company. We, we, you know, we did a Queen of the Mountain match, the first ever, which was, you know, obviously an homage to, to King of the Mountain. Will King of the Mountain match return? Quite possibly at some point. Hey, we got the penalty box, so we might as well use it once in a while. Um, you know, you, we just did Feast or Fired. You know, as I say, as much as we're going to look at moving forward and we want to look at uh, how do we tackle things differently and doing things in a new way, part of part of any great company is looking back and celebrating um, your history and your successes. And we're going to sprinkle a lot of that in 
And I know the fans have been waiting for a new set and uh, some have been waiting very patiently. Some have been waiting a little less patiently than others, maybe. And it all comes from a, a point of passion. Well, we're, we're hard at work designing a new look and a new feel for, for TNA to both uh, honor some of our history, but also to, uh, to be forward think we, th thinking and forward moving. Well, you kind of covered a question there from Liam Crowley, comicbook.com, who was asking about what can you tease regarding the new TNA set. So I think we've covered that there. Scott, I want to thank you so much for your time here to answer these select questions from the media. Uh, any final thoughts, any closing thoughts? I know there's so much to process from this past weekend, and it's no rest for the weary of the UK invasion tour in a few days. Yeah, I mean, look, it's, uh, I mean, I'm getting ready. I got to head to the airport here. <laughs> In the next little bit, I got to, you know, wrap up with you and pack up. So um, it is a crazy time. I'm looking forward to getting on that plane and having some time to sit there and, and, and reflect and uh, and start preparing. Because, you know, what, what I said in that ring, you know, maybe with a couple of words that shouldn't have been said and I'll, I'll find what charity I'll <laughs> donate to this time. Um, but I mean, I talk about the, the passion and the, and, and the heart, uh, from our fans. And, uh, at the end of the day, I, I've got that same feeling, you know, um, when I joined this company, Tom, you know, my, uh, my wrestling career was right winding down. I always say it was either cut short by, uh, by injury or an utter lack of talent. We're not sure which might've been a combination. Um, but, uh. You know, I didn't know what I was going to do, and I stumbled into Nashville. I sat with, uh, you know, old Jay Double, you know, gave me an opportunity to join TNA Wrestling, and it changed my life, you know, just like it changed Will Ospreay's life when he sat there and saw it as a, as a child, just like it changed so many lives. So for me to get to be part of taking it and, uh, and relaunching this is, is humbling and it's exciting because, you know, I love this company, and, and yes, I love those initials. Because when I think about what was a catalyst for change in my life, for setting me on the track that I needed to be, TNA Wrestling was part of that. And I know, and I've gone out there, and from meeting the fans and the talent, it did that for a lot of people. The Josh Alexander stories, the Will Ospreay stories, the Jordan Grace stories, these, these stories of people that didn't quite feel like anything was quite for them until they stumbled upon TNA Wrestling, um, you know, rings true all over the place. And, and for me... Uh, I, I'm excited. I think wrestling in general is in a pretty great spot. And I think that this company is in an amazing spot to be right there in the mix and uh, making things happen and being part of an unbelievable industry that when we do it right, like I said, it allows us to create moments that bind people together with memories. And it shows people that uh, there's a place for you. And it shows people that if you go out there and, uh, and want something go get it like one of the lines in that promo if we accomplished everything we dreamed of we didn't dream big enough tom it's time for us to go out there and dream big again and that's what tna wrestling means to me hell yeah scott go to the airport do your thing appreciate your time <laughs> i know you're on a tight schedule thank you so much thank you to everybody that's tuned in live here on facebook for scott demore i'm tom hannafin remember in 2024 tna is back